Hey everybody, welcome back to the Map Deck Classroom. My name's Paul from Map Deck Cycle Works. Another interesting video for you today. Um, we've got this beautiful look 795 Aerolite from 2016 in. Now, it has just arrived in the post back from Hambini Engineering. So if you don't know about Hambini Engineering, go and check him out on YouTube. Um, it's a fascinating channel, you'll learn a lot. And he makes custom bottom brackets. But that's not where the interest lies in this. Almost every single part of this frame has got some really fascinating uh, engineering to it, which I think you're gonna be kind of interested in. We're gonna break it down for you bit by bit uh, and just detail what went into this incredible frame. Stay tuned. All right, let's start with this fascinating bottom bracket. So this is a, a set of cranks called the Z cranks. These are fascinating because they're actually made uh, one piece of carbon. And if you just think about the engineering that's gone into that, like where the torsional forces go and, and what you've got to bond to what, where, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and they actually got around some interesting engineering problems with this, with the crank length, by actually making this little sort of three-sided nut that goes in the end. You can actually adjust the crank length uh, as you go. So this is a set of cranks you buy once. And the same with the, um, the actual chainring bolts as well. There's two sets of chainring bolts, so you can either fit 110 or 130 BCD chainrings to this, um, making it really versatile. Now, on the inside here, you can just about see this blue bearing uh, still attached. This goes into BB65, which is special to look. Um, 65 millimeter uh, bearing. And the reason it's so big is because you can literally thread the entire crank through the frame and just use this lock ring to, to uh, adjust the preload. Fascinating cranks. So um, sadly, times have moved on a little bit and our customer wanted to fit a, um, a quark uh, power meter. So sadly, these are gonna be resigned to the shelf, looking like a piece of uh, modern art masterpiece. And instead, we're gonna be fitting a uh, SRAM Red Quark power meter. And this is on the dub spindles. This is a 29 millimeter axle on here. So we had a compatibility problem going from a 65 millimeter bearing um, down to uh, a dub standard and nothing was on the market. We found like one place in China that was selling something that might have fitted, emailed them, nothing back from them. So uh, the other solution would have been to use the look um, like a converter where you can put like a standard threaded bottom bracket in. They're renowned for creaking and breaking and pretty awful piece of kit really. Uh, definitely not what look are famous for. On a bike like this, you do definitely not want them to creak. So we sent an email off to Hambini, um, said, can you make us something? He said, send the frame over, let me take a look. And this masterpiece arrived back. So if you're not familiar with Hambini's work, he, um, he measures the frames to the, like, the nth degree. Um, finds out all the little imperfections and makes a bottom bracket run as smooth as it can possibly can through precision engineering. Um, and this came back to us fully fitted, um, machined up by Hambini himself. I have to say it's, it's beautiful, you know. Um, it's hard to see actually where the joins are and actually how it was install, installed. You've got to look really carefully. Um, fitted NTM bearings. And we've just done a test for this and they, they spin, the cranks spin beautifully. Just, it's just a, a work of art. Um, when we fit the power meter, we'll do a, we'll do a little spin test and show you, but um, the, you know, the workmanship that's gone into this is, is incredible and definitely worthy of, of this frame. Right, let's show you some more details. All right, so the seat post design we're actually gonna be using is this slightly more uh, up-to-date one, which is called the, still called the E-Post 2, um, but it just uses um, a much less radical uh, wedge type system. So one, one big bolt comes in the top, thread through the entire system here. And at the bottom, there's a little uh, brass barrel here, um, barrel bolt, um, that just allows this piece to slide up and down and clamp inside the frame. Uh, and the height adjustment is done once you've cut the frame to roughly where you want it to be, you can then use various spacers to, um, to space that out. Now, luckily, uh, the frame came, we don't have to cut it. It's probably about two or three millimeters on the long side, so we're not gonna bother cutting it until we know that we're absolutely happy with the bike fit. But as it stands, we can go in um, with this just absolutely solid into the, into the frame. It's just 
brilliant to see like such engineering that goes into this and attention to detail like most bike brands will make that a steel bolt um, or even aluminium when you get corrosion problems the fact that you're using like a steel bolt and a brass um, brass barrel bolt just all those sort of details are thought about even down to a little hook on the end uh, which is designed to take a, a di2 battery that will just hook straight in so there's no more like trying to jam a, a di2 battery inside a seat post it's just um, every single part of it's being brought out and it's like not enough bike brands take care of these small details. Um, right, headset next. Right, hopefully you guys can see this, but this is the headset design on the front of this Look 795 Aero Light. Um, looks quite radical as it is, but won't you see, see what's inside. So normal that the bearing goes underneath, but on the top here, all the cable routing is designed to run around um, a steerer tube, nothing unusual, quite a lot of brands do that these days. What is unusual is that look actually make this weird looking part. So that all the cables, gear and brake, can all run around the head tube completely unimpeded. Like they've got their own channels, they're not gonna get stuck up or fouled or rubbed or anything. Attention to detail is insane. And to keep all that in place and stop it rattling around, they actually make their own super light like aluminium compression bolts and all of that is held in place with um, this lock ring as well so you're not going to get anything rattling or moving around or making a noise this is all going to be locked down solid secure in there and like don't have to worry about it that's like unheard of like the amount of stuff that we see with this sort of system but wires are just left loose to rub on things or they rattle up and down as you're riding and it's just an annoying vibration. Like, look, really have thought about every single part of this. All right, from the, from the headset, we move on to these, these forks. So rim brakes, uh, obviously. Um, brakes are made by TRP, but in some sort of collaboration where they actually built the brake directly into the fork. Now you can still get to them and clean them, but we're gonna take these apart and give everything a really good service. But the level of adjustment on these because there's like a little magnetic base plate that goes over these. So when they're all adjusted perfectly, I mean, you shouldn't even be able to see that there's a brake there. Even the cable is, uh, is hidden. It's got a little channel so that the brake, you thought the excess cable goes in to a little channel and then gets covered up by that cowling. Um, again, just, just beautiful design. And the more you take these apart and you start to appreciate how much work has gone into designing these. Uh, it's incredible, like all the spring adjustments are there, um, all in easy to get to place. You're just gonna pull that magnetic cover off and you can adjust all the parts of your brake. Um, yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> all right, one more piece of crazy engineering, I promise. Um, and then we'll get on to building this. This is, this is the monoblock uh, stem. Uh, again, this is gonna be adjustable, height adjustable with like this cool, um, aluminium section that fits into here and you can actually adjust the, the angle of the stem and the handlebars actually clamp around this design here to make this beautiful clean aero design with the front of the bars and we'll show you how this gets installed but all the cables are going to be here in fact they're actually fitting SRAM axis on this so the only cable we're going to see is a rear brake cable um, running in and even that gets threaded through this uh, this aero block stem this bonkers the bonkers engineering like I say every single part of this bike has got some massively uh, over-engineered, completely bonkers, attention to detail off the charts. Um, I just can't wait to put this thing together. Like, I'm gonna show you um, how many parts there are involved in all of this, which you won't even recognize. Um, it's like putting together a Formula One car or something. Yeah, let's just get on with the build. <laughs> hey, okay, so this is the Look 795 Aero Light, fully built now. It'd be rude not to show you guys the entire thing once it's been built. So this has been built up with a brand new SRAM Red Axis group set. Um, that bottom bracket from Hanbini, if you remember, still spinning beautifully. Look at that go. So this has got the, uh, the Venn cycling wheels. There's a lovely layup of the carbon on here. Um, these are super wide and we've actually fitted them with the 23 uh, wide tires, but because of the width of the rims, they actually measure a 25 and they suit this bike really well. All set up tubeless, of course, with the Effetto Mariposo valves, our real favorites at the moment. They're slightly too wide for the front maybe, the little um, the brake just sticking out a little bit more, but that's just part of this bike's heritage. So I think you'll agree, this bike has come up really nicely. Okay, let's do the weigh-in. 
what have we got? 7.7 kilograms. What a beautiful super light bike. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we've enjoyed building this fantastic bike. If you want to learn more about the engineering troubles that Hambini had uh, in getting this bottom bracket to work, uh, we'll link that video in the description below. Thanks for joining us. See you on the next one.